All right, so I got the windows cleaned. And they're not spotless. Tractor's definitely not spotless. I will do a video someday of them cleaning the windows and the whole tractor again. All right, well, I'm going to hook back up to the wagon for chopping this afternoon. That's probably all I'm going to have for today. Um, yeah, just comment below on what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. See, I see this stuff every day, but you guys don't. So let me know what you want to see more and less of. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And comment below. Thank you. Good morning everybody, it is Monday, September 6th, it's Labor Day, um, I'm in the calf barn, just going to start feeding calves, and I figured I would show you kind of how we do it, so I'll show you the pasteurizer first. So that goes through a few cycles where it heats it and then it, it's at, or right now it's at maintain temp, so that's, means it's ready to feed, it's at 102 degrees, which is, can like it. Um, it goes through a few cycles where it heats it and then it'll cool it and then it heats it, stays there at that temperature for about 30 minutes, then it cools it down again. And yeah, the calves, they just love it. So I figured I'd show you this today how we, how process works. I gotta, we gotta feed them and then we gotta bed them, kind of clean up in here. Spent the weekend hunting so I didn't do everything that I do in here. I helped feed them a little bit, but my sister did more of it. So today we just kind of gotta clean up in here a little bit. So take along. So usually when we feed milk, we give uh, the calves about a half pail, maybe a little bit more, a half pail full of the milk, and that way they get they get their nutrients, and that's just what the experts really say to feed them. Is make sure they get a half pail, something a little more. Um, if they're not feeling good, they should get a little less, kind of help their stomach out. But then we give them a thing called electrolytes which helps give them energy and you know, what Gatorade does for us, what Electrolytes does for them. So as you guys probably saw, these bigger calves, uh, they get so excited when we feed milk, they put up a fight. So, sometimes make me spill a lot. Uh, these calves, they're all older. So we're trying to wean them off because they'll get moved out of here soon. So they don't, they don't get them up anymore. All right, so now we're gonna start feeding the water to the calves. We wait a few minutes after feeding milk. That way the, the milk can settle and not give them a stomach ache. So now, now we're gonna feed them some water. I I got the other side fed water. I didn't put that on camera because well, saw one side, same with that for the other side. Um, right. Sister Hannah's here feeding bottles. Uh, how much milk is in those bottles and how how long do you feed them for? 
Uh, there's about six, six pints in this bottle, and we feed them on bottles for about a week. And it's about the same 103 degrees as what I feed the other calves. So, as you can tell, they love it. She's in charge of getting the younger calves fed, including my calves. She better take good care of this one. Looks like she is. Oh, she's got slab all over. So yeah, that's her job. She takes care of the younger calves, does the bottles. She uh, medicates them, tries to keep them healthy. And I do all the heavy lifting. Teamwork. All right, so now that water's fed, you give them a uh, freedom of pellet or grain. See if anybody's got anything left. Uh, uh, oh, you got some? Yeah. That's what it looks like. Put some in their belly. They, they love it. So yeah, I'm gonna get that fed quickly. Alright, so Hannah says she doesn't have enough milk, so she's gonna make some milk places. We can't use this stuff because well, it's not pasteurized yet. Even though I did pour one pail in this morning. Just to heat it up so I had enough for my calves. But don't listen to me. So but. this cup, I actually we measured it. It holds exactly eight ounces worth of milk replacer. I like to pour it in this scoop. So it helps with putting it in the bottle. And I usually do two cups for one calf. Water to make it warm water. Sounds like you should do some math. Hot water plus cold water equals warm water. Uh, we're gonna let her get back to work so she doesn't get distracted. Um, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean all this up because that looks terrible. Like I said, I was hunting this weekend. So I didn't stick around in here much. Helped do some stuff. My sister did most of it, and well, apparently she didn't wanna scrape the floors for me. So I'm gonna scrape the floors, I'm gonna bed them quick. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. All right. Floors are cleaned up and new bedding put down. Calves are nice and bedded. I need more bedding. I'll have to get some more. Hey, it looks all comfy. So yeah, that's pretty much the rundown on how we take care of our calves around here. So yeah, we. Hope you enjoyed that part of it. I can do another one if you want me to. So. Otherwise, I think that's all there is for this morning. I know we're gonna chop more corn later, and then we are going to cover the bunker, which, yeah, not bad. You guys can't see that. Sun's coming up, so you can't see the big pile. But yeah, we're gonna cover that, so I'll show you guys the process and how we do that. And we're back by the chickens. Nope. Tip, you guys might wonder why there's a golf ball in there. Well, I googled one time that you put a golf ball where you want them to lay their eggs. They'll lay there. So far it has worked. Um, they do peck at it, which is fine with me. They can peck at the golf ball rather than pick out their eggs and break them. I prefer them not to break the eggs because I have 
quite a few customers that buy eggs and I need to make sure that I have enough eggs. The more they break and eat, the less I got to sell. I have about, I think there's 30 of them in here all together. Like I said, I wish I could, uh, wish I could let them run. It would be quite nice, but it's just not a thing we can do with them right now. They do, they do run around when I'm nearby, so I can, if the dog comes out, I can protect them. Otherwise, they just, they don't get to eat much grass unless I throw it some handfuls in there. Otherwise, they get table scraps. I go to the local feed store and I get them some feed, which they absolutely love, which is awesome. So they're, they're good to me, so I gotta be good to them. Hey guys, that's breakfast. Right now, me and Dad are going to clean off the cattle barn platform. I'm gonna take a load of manure out. I just hooked my way again. I'm gonna go hook up the manure spreader. The vet's coming. So we figured we'd have a clean platform for him to work on so he doesn't pull him in there. Hopefully he thinks it's later, but stay tuned. What I just realized, I need to invest in some gloves. My hands got really dirty and then I'm gonna get the camera all dirty and everything else all dirty. I tell you. Alright, so I just had to talk to Dad. He needs to run to town for some parts. So I'm, he's gonna fill up the manure spreader. And I'm going to run to town. So stay tuned. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you guys still with me. Yeah, I'm back from the parts store. I got myself some sunglasses. It's getting very bright out. But you know what I forgot? Gloves. I tell ya. Anyways, I'm in the field about to uh, spread some cow poop. Stinks on the inside with the camel or with the uh, window shut, so it's gonna stay shut. Anyway, this is pretty much all just liquid. So we we'll drive it through the field fast, let it fly. It won't take too long to get it. Starting chopping soon. Don't quote me on it. I don't know 100% what's going on yet. And then we'll be covering the bunker sometime today. So stay tuned.
guys, we had a little bit of camera problems, so I didn't get the last part of the bunker on video, but it's the finished product. So ideally you want those tires to be a lot closer, but we were running out of tires. And the reason we saw starting from the left going to the right, because there's two, I don't know if you know this, but there's two tarps in there. And the one on the right, it overlaps the left one. So that's why we were going from the left to the right. And then on the bottom here, see there's some junk silage that just helps put weight down. So yeah, that'll pretty much be covered until next year. And it'll make some pretty dang good feed. And all the cat cattle will enjoy it very much along with all the cows. So then I'll take you to the next bunker that we're gonna do. This one's also corn silage. And then as you can see, it's not corn silage. It's heifer feed. This will be the, the next bunker that gets filled. It's the biggest one we have. Uh, Right now, that's just hay silage it's being it's spread out so it can dry out. It's not the greatest stuff. It goes to the young heifers instead of the cows. So it's it still works, still gets fed. It's not gonna hurt them sitting out like this. It's just not drying, not drying out quick enough. But it'll be fed up pretty quick. But yeah, this is the next bunker. All corn silage in here. It's the biggest bunker we have. Hopefully. We find some more tires. I got a buddy that says he's going to bring some tires out for me. So, one way or another, we'll get it done. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. That was day in the life of a dairy farmer. So, thank you. Have a good day. And please like and subscribe.